Oh my goodness, guys, look at that. Hey YouTube, so I just got off work, I uh, came down to check on the girl over here, see if she laid her eggs, you just, it's one of the first things I do when I come home, I check on the hatchling and I check on the girls that are supposed to lay. And this is the last clutch that I'm actually going to be expecting this year, unless one of my other ones go. If uh, a few of my other ones start to go late in the season, I am about to start pairing again in about two months like I did last time. And I am already pairing one of them together and it is a leopard het pied vpi xanthic to a inchy spinner 100 head vpi and that's a breeder loan with a partner of mine well again we're going to talk about that later in the future but they're pairing up and hopefully we get some eggs by december that'd be cool we'll see as well as several of my other females over here and there so we ended up getting Good one right here. So this is my blade clown female. She's usually pretty nice. I imagine she's not gonna be so nice. Uh, I actually had her paired to two males. My pastel red stripe GHI male. The other possible father going to be my pastel blackhead 66% head bite. So both of them actually create valuable babies, both the market value wise, potential wise, yada yada yada. I don't actually mind if the blackhead becomes the father over the red stripe because both of them I have future projects that I need at least one of them in. So I won't be bothered if I get a blackhead uh, het clown that is gonna be valued at probably around five or $600 as opposed to a red stripe het clown that's gonna be valued, depending on who you ask, 11 to $1,800. That part I don't really mind because I got projects for both. I'm gonna be working on both and I'm gonna be creating an army of hets over the next couple of years and come out with a bang. As that goes on, I'm gonna keep adding more females. Most of my clown females that I got, I get at a much larger size. I have to pay way more for them, but it cuts off a few more years for me and I could just keep popping out heads. And then when I'm ready, I can start producing a whole bunch of visuals and other heads out of it using the heads that I already created. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I set up my egg box. All right, so this is gonna be my tub here, right? A six, six quart Sterilite tub. I had these already prepped for my clutches. Um, several of them, and then I decided, uh, man, should have done that. I decided I didn't like the vermiculite, which is what I had in them, and the last clutch. So the last clutch that I cut recently was inside these tubs here, and had vermiculite and perlite mixture. I like the texture of the perlite way more, and the vermiculite, it just kept making everything all glittery and really dirty. I didn't like that. Today, we're gonna be doing this one. And I like these tubs. These are from Target. All these ones are from Walmart, but I like the clear, clear top options. So this is how I'm gonna do it. I already have water prepped inside my other incubator, which is filled with water bottles, kept at 89.4 degrees. Um, the water bottles themselves actually stay more stable at 89.1. Not that that really matters. I trust my system. So while I have that other incubator running, this is already gonna be up to temp with that. Also the same with the hot spots. My hot spots are kept at 88.7 or 88.9 or 89.1. So let's get this one out of here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is grab my vermic or my paralyzer. This stuff's like nine bucks at Ace Hardware and I think seven bucks at Home Depot. Right. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna create this, uh, it gets a little dusty, but it's like some powdery cotton ball kind of like stuff. I put probably about <clears throat> an inch to maybe half an inch. I don't know what that is. 
I'd say that's like two, three inches or something like that. Maybe an inch. Probably about an inch. I don't really care how much I put in. As long as there's a decent amount, like it's about my first knuckle on my index finger right there. That way I can just, then you get one of these. Um, I get these in a giant sheet, all right? I only buy them by one, which is how I built both my other incubators out of it and then made five egg boxes also. And this thing is a light diffuser and it's in the paneling section. Like we're gonna find the, the drywall and stuff like that in Home Depot, not in the light section. Anyway, then you use little snippets and you can just cut them up to size. I like to trim up the edges here. Uh, so I go back over and I try to snip some more off here and there. My last clutch looked pretty dirty. I don't like them roaming around on top of this. I've heard of people saying that their hatchlings got cut because <clears throat> it is pretty sharp. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that fits. And voila, it's gonna go in there just like that, sitting on top of the parallel mixture. Then, most people will measure it out like a one-to-one -one ratio. I don't. At least I didn't with the last two clutches. Mostly because my eggs are not gonna be sitting inside of it. My eggs are gonna be on top of it with this. So I can actually get it a little more runny and wet than a normal person would typically have it. Kind of mix it up a bit. And if it stays formed in a ball, it's usually pretty good, but you usually don't want water dripping from it if you squeeze like that. My water's dripping over here. Um, but because I use a light diffuser and I don't just set them in there, it's not that big of an issue. And there's many other ways to do this. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. See here and there. Then, gonna do that, and voila, done. And look at that beautiful mama. All right guys, so one thing I typically do is I put her inside of a separate tub that I usually have setting off the side. A tub kind of like, where is it? Like this one. So I'm just gonna put her inside of that after I get her off the eggs. I'm gonna go ahead and sanitize my hands real quick. Especially after that Paralyte stuff. Wiped it off, but it always kind of feels funky. Especially with that much dust. All right. So if you look, she's really in a funky position. She's actually wrapped around two eggs on the front end. And her tail's wrapped around and hooked underneath an egg in between a spot where it's being held on top of another egg. You just really got to focus on that tail. There we go. Got the tail hooked. Her. Perfect. And this is the mom. Make sure that she's nice and empty. Beautiful, beautiful. First time mom here. And this is what we're left with. I like that makes. So these eggs, she just got done laying them probably within the last couple hours. I'm gonna go ahead and zero out the scale. Put them on there and we got seven eggs at 801 grams seven eggs not bad for first time mom all three of uh, our clutches were the first time moms all of our clutches eggs were all over 110 grams each get them over here on the egg box sit without touching the wall anywhere I don't need to pull them apart I think I'm gonna pull off the top one so when you go to pull the eggs, they're like really soft and squishy for the first like five or six hours. And so you typically can peel them off quite easily. I mean, it's still kind of scary because you don't want to rip an egg. You know, you see people do band-aids and whatnot over them. I don't want to try it unless I have to, but I do want to take this top egg off because it's directly on top of the other egg, which is surrounded on three other sides. And carefully kind of wedge it apart like pulling off a sticker but without your fingernail there got it done this is the one i wanted to move and these are pretty close to the wall here okay so i went ahead and pulled apart two of the seven eggs this one was smothering the top of this one along with the other sides and this one i decided to move because it was too close to the edge it was like barely even a centimeter away I don't want that. They're gonna expand a little bit for a while, plus water's gonna be building up on the side. 
condensation is. We don't want that. Now, we're gonna candle them and see what's up. All right, so like in the last video, you kind of want the veins. Well, you always want the veins up. So this one's actually a little crooked compared to how it was laid. So the embryo is gonna be that bubble. You see that bubble? Now you don't have to have the bubble directly up, but you do want the main series of veins up and uh, where it's really vein heavy on top, which is usually around the embryo. Not always, but it is around it. So this egg is shaped funny, like it's gonna roll anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this one. Yeah, uh, we'll recandle it after I get the rest of them kind of set up. We'll recandle it, mark the top, and try to find a good position. Boom. Perfect, perfect. No, no. Okay. All right, so this one must have rolled in, in the box because the whole yellow side was directly up instead of the veins, which is why I'm candling them. The ones that are actually upright, this one, that one, that one. Man, she just rolled the crap out of these. All right, I'm gonna go through and redo all this. Okay. So I'm gonna head separated all the eggs and now I'm going to recandle them. And this time I'm gonna use a marker and mark the top. Now this egg's embryo looks very, very different. It's like a giant sac, twice the size as the normal embryo that I would see in an egg. In fact, you can actually see it. It almost looks like it was ruptured. And the veins in it are very spiderweb-like. They look super, super thin. There's a few really good ones in there, but I do see some very thin veins. Unless this was the most fresh egg, but this one, I don't know. All right. That's kind of all there is to it. Uh, there's about three in there that look like they had some really rough veins and one of them had a really weird looking embryo. So to me, it looked like the embryo was already like ruptured on the inside. Um, so I went ahead and put a plus sign on it right here. So this is one I'm really gonna be watching for. And yeah, next thing for me to do, put down some press and seal. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get some toothpicks in here or something to kind of stop them from, from rolling. My wonderful Charla, she's a teacher, so she let me use her paper clips. I think that's a pretty good idea. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to pinch them in, kind of like that. And then the test, ah, that one. Okay. So, our last quick go around, we got an inch of paralyte in here with our water, but our water doesn't come above the light diffuser, and uh, neither does the paralyte, either. We need some press and seal on the top. Like I've said in other videos, I don't do it to keep humidity in. I don't have a problem with that. I do it to keep the humidity out because my incubator is made out of water. Edges real quick, one last time. We're good. It's gonna move. Then we're gonna place it right inside that bad boy. So 
this is the other clutch that we had. And so far, the egg that I was questioning. Actually, it looks pretty good. We got another like five weeks for that clutch. Just a quick tune in on the last clutch that we did cut. There was one egg that didn't make it out. The last egg in the video, it just didn't make it. It had a few deformities and I was already worried about it from the get go. And you could see me in the, in the original cutting video of me trying to like poke it and see if it responded and it didn't even move for the first like half an hour. And then out of nowhere, it twitched a little bit and I was like, cool, it's alive. I was super excited. And it also was the last one out of the egg a week later. And yeah, we'll get into that on the update video after this clutch sheds out. Cause right now they are in shed. Look at those beauties up. That's all you're gonna get. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna go ahead and wash her off a little bit. Just a quick wipe down. There she is. So a little of that beautiful mama. I'll wipe her down with some chlorhexidine, clean, do a deep clean on the tub. You guys already know how that goes. I've done it in two videos, I think. And if not, there's tons of them that do it. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. See you guys.